I think season two is really going to be an opportunity for everybody to really get to know more about a lot of the characters on the show. We go deeper with everyone. I think what's been really exciting to watch um, through season one, we come in sort of seeing the funhouse mirror version of these people because we're being brought in through uh, Piper's lens of life. And then as the show begins to go further into uh, the story, we start to see that these people are more than what they appear on the surface. And then I think it's so wonderful how Genji and her team have just really taken that a step further in season two. And that includes Suzanne. They began it with Suzanne, you know, a uh, character. She started in one place and ended in another. And it's exciting to be a part of something where you see that just being more thoroughly examined. I think the transformation that we see with Suzanne, what I think, what I have noticed for myself, what um, I learned do, playing the role was that I don't even know if it's so much as she has transformed as much as we watching her and these people from the outside have had a change of opinion. We come in with a formed opinion of who these people are, positively or negatively. Um, and then we start to realize that the layers are so much deeper and that we might see her as one thing, but then as we start to really spend some more time with her character, we realize that she's more than the one thing we pigeonholed her to be, that she actually has a heart, that she has a point of view, that she is ultimately like trying to be well-intended with her actions, um, and so it is me, Uzo, who's been changed, really. We meet her parents again, and we actually meet them. We, we get to see a real growth from young childhood to early adolescence of her experience with her family, how that relationship between her and her mother, that dynamic of that, has translated into the dynamic between her and Piper in prison. And that's really exciting because you start to understand that it's the infatuation and the, the feelings that she then carries over late this season towards Piper are of a different sort. She transfers some of those feelings she has towards her mother that aren't so positive onto Piper's character. I became aware that this show was a hit when I was on a mountain in Utah, true story, with no service whatsoever, but Wi-Fi when I got home to um, the, the lodge I was in. And every day I had so many Twitter followers all of a sudden. And I was trying to understand, I'd be looking at my computer and think, what, you know, 500 new followers, what is happening? But then I was, oh, Orange has come out and people are watching and it has caught fire and it's really starting to connect with people in a way that they are really wanting to express how much they've been moved by it. They're laughing at it and caught up in the stories and, you know, oh my gosh, I'm a, an Alex, I'm a Piper, oh, Suzanne, you know, touched a piece of my heart. And um, that's when I started to understand that we are resonating in a different way that I had never experienced in my entire life. V sees an open window with Suzanne. She quickly taps into the fact that Suzanne is looking for a love keeper, someone to give love, someone to love her. And she uses that to her advantage. And she knows that Suzanne will do anything for love. And because Suzanne lives so passionately and protects everything that she does love, essentially V takes her on and makes her a soldier. And she becomes one of her footmen, her muscle, um, and turns Suzanne's normal vulnerability against her. What has been incredibly exciting and maybe the greatest pleasure I've had doing this show is putting a spotlight on a group of people, a society of people that we never hear from or see represented really um, in this way and done sort of authentically as well. Um, 
that's exciting to me. And, you know, prisons themselves are always so outside of society that you don't see them, you don't drive past them, they're closed. So to be able to bring um, the camera into Litchfield and for people to sort of see how these people live their day to day, are surviving and hearing their stories and being able to understand that they're more than just the one thing we try to you know, define them as being is exciting. We have freedom to go off script. Um, the writers are really great about that. Um, I try to, as an exercise and a challenge to myself, stay to the writing for the first couple of takes because I wanna see how I can make her come alive through the words that are already scribed rather than riffing off too far. But our writers are very generous in that they aren't so precious in a positive way with their words that they will come in and let you try something different um, a few takes in later and then you have that freedom to play. I got an incredible reaction from um, a father who had a son in a Broadway show who watches Orange is the New Black and he had been incarcerated and he came up to, I was myself and um, Diane and Dasha, we were out one night, and he came up to us and told us after the show that he was a fan of the show and how real, even though his experience was in a male prison, he saw his experience there in our storytelling and how close to the bone it cut him because that was true what he was watching. From the laughs to the highs to the lows, that was his experience. He said, Litchfield, that's real. And he really, really enjoyed the show. So I felt a little bit of pride in that we had kept that authenticity going.